In this demonstration, we're going to be modeling radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is a spontaneous process in which an isotope, which is a parent atom, loses particles and energy from its nucleus to form an isotope of a new element. So it's actually creating a different element. The half-life is the time it takes for half of those radioactive isotopes, or half of the atoms, to decay. In this experiment, we will be modeling how a radioactive parent atom, carbon-14, so that's unstable, decays to the stable daughter isotope, nitrogen-14. Notice they're different elements. The radioactive decay particles in this example are our pennies. They are decaying into the stable atoms represented by chickpeas. So what I've done is I put 100 pennies into a container, tail side up, so head side down, and these are our unstable carbon-14 atoms. I'm going to shake the container, and then what I'm going to do is remove all the pennies that are head side up, because these are representing the atoms that have decayed. So I know it may be not easy to see, but there are 100 pennies. They are all tail side up, so these are all radioactive. I'm going to go ahead and shake them now. And I'm going to pull out all of the pennies that are head side up because those are representing my decayed atoms. All right, so now I've taken out all of my decayed pennies. So my decayed pennies are here. Um, they were lined up, but there are 55, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 55 decayed. There are 45 left in the container. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So in my data chart, the pennies with heads up, which are decayed, I'm going to write down 55. And then our pennies with tails, or our atoms left, is 45. Now remember, when these radioactive isotopes are decaying, they're not disappearing. They're actually changing into a new substance. So for our example, our atoms are going to change into chickpeas. So now our atoms have decayed into chickpeas because the decayed atoms are still in existence. We started with 100 atoms. We always have to end with 100 atoms. They're not disappearing, they're just changing into a new substance. So when we do this, we're going to add our chickpeas back in because we still want to represent having 100 atoms to start. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the trial and see how many more atoms decay. Okay, so now I will go ahead and I will take out my decayed atoms, which are our heads up atoms. So I've gone ahead and I've counted up our decayed atoms. So I took out all of our heads up pennies. So there were 23 heads up this time, 22 remaining in the box. So our 23 pennies that decayed have turned into chickpeas. I'm gonna add that into our box. Remember our box should always have 100 atoms, which is why I'm adding it back in. So again, I'll go ahead and shake the box. So I shook the box. Take out our pennies. So this time, our heads up pennies is 13. And the number of pennies remaining that are still radioactive are I'm going to replace my decayed atoms with my stable isotope chickpeas. I'll go ahead and repeat the process again. I'm going to shake it another 10 seconds. Okay, it's getting easier to remove these now, obviously, because there's fewer radioactive atoms left. So I have one, two, three. Okay, five of them decayed this time. There are three remaining. So we'll go ahead and add five more of our stable atoms in. There we go. And we'll do this again. 
Oh, and actually we made a mistake there. Uh, there were actually four still left in the container, but one of them was hiding underneath a chickpea, I guess. So I will go ahead and take out my four. And my two that decayed. Three, actually three of them decayed this time. Okay. So then we have th one left. We add three more chickpeas into our container. We'll shake it again to model another half-life. So we'll see if this one decayed yet or not. It looks like it did. Okay, so it looks like we have completed our decay cycle here. So now I have one decayed, zero remaining. And I have a hundred new atoms that formed from my original radioactive isotopes.